Hey, this is Jack from Wild Nothing, and uh, this is what's in my bag at Amoeba. First one I picked is this Joni Mitchell record, Dog Eat Dog. I'm a big Joni Mitchell fan. My mom was always listening to Joni Mitchell in the house when I was a kid. This is kind of like one of the Joni Mitchell records that, that has a really bad reputation, but I absolutely love it. Thomas Dolby was involved, who I'm a big fan of. You know, it has a lot of 80s production tropes that I personally love. It threw a lot of people off, but, but the songwriting is still there. The lyrical content is still there. There's so many good tracks on this record. My favorite track is probably this, this last song, Lucky Girl. But yeah, it's like a really wonderful record. I kind of like started listening to it pretty heavily a couple years ago. Doggy dog, you can lie, cheat, skip, skip, beat him any way you can. B-52s was like really big in my house when I was a kid. Let's meet and have a baby now. My aunt and uncle lived in Athens like at the time and they still actually live outside of Athens. But yeah, so like my parents were always listening to REM, B-52s. The whole sort of like Athens scene is like pretty special to me. I love the B-52s. I think like somehow, even though they're clearly a very big and well-respected band, they're still kind of like underrated in my opinion, just for like what they did culturally. This particular record, Whammy, not like one of their more well-known ones, but I love this record. There's a song called Butterbean that's really funny to me. Yeah, it's just like fun music that was like very sort of avant-garde, but in a playful way, which is, I think, really hard to pull off. Got some Brazilian stuff here. Marcos Valle. I absolutely love this record. There's a few standout tracks to me. Estrelar, the first track, Fogo de Sol, Dia D. I started listening to a ton of Brazilian music like around the time that my third record came out, which was in like 2016. I feel like there was something really special about like Brazilian popular music in this era where there's a lot of sort of like jazz undertones. The compositions are, are really complex, but the music is still like very buoyant and fun. And like guys like him like found really amazing ways to like weave very catchy vocal melodies over like fairly complex arrangements and compositions. So I love it. And just Portuguese is so beautiful as like a, a sung language. My next pick, Ennio Morricone. I decided to go for this collected 2LP comp, just getting the best of the best. I've always been super into soundtrack music, instrumental music, ambient music, and yeah, he's just like one of the greats, probably the greatest. There's just so much. I mean, like I already, already have a lot of his soundtracks on vinyl, but I just figured I would get this one just so I could just talk about him because I love him. Just like a total master of melody. Like, I feel like I've learned so much about melody just from listening to his soundtracks and the way that, that he, you know, can go like really grand and really beautiful, but then also has a ton of stuff that's like extremely dissonant and like bizarre and just he like totally could do it all. Do you have a favorite soundtrack of his? I want to say it's Farushka that I really love. <laughs> There's some beautiful stuff on it, but it's a little more like on the dissonant side. I 
I picked this Leroy Hudson record, Love Oh Love. And I'm so in love with you, baby. So in love. Said I'm so in love with you, baby. I can't even remember, honestly, how I got turned on to this record. I just always was very attracted to soul arrangements and melodic soul music, Philly soul music, all kinds of stuff. This record is like, it's just so good. And I, and I feel like when I'm talking about this, this kind of music with people, like this seems to be a record that not a lot of people know about, but yeah, the first two tracks, So In Love With You and Love Oh Love, like, I don't know, like to me, they, sh they should be like soul staples. They're, they're just like that good. He just has like an absolutely amazing voice, wonderful arrangements. This one's like a pure nostalgia trip for me. It's Chemical Brothers record, Surrender. This was probably one of the first CDs that I ever bought when I was in elementary school. There's a handful of things I was picking up, like Green Day, like your typical kind of like rock stuff from, from that era, like early 90s. Like amidst all of that, I must have seen like the Michelle Gondry video for uh, Let Forever Be, and it just kind of like blew my little brain. And I picked up this record and listened to it all the time. And I've like been revisiting it lately and it holds up extremely well to me. There's like a, a song, Asleep From Day, with Hope Sandoval that is absolutely gorgeous. It's like such an amazing song and not the kind of song that you would necessarily imagine on a record like this. Yeah, so I'm like repping the Chemical Brothers today for that reason alone. This is uh, the sound. Counting the days before a new construction sound is like my favorite post-punk band that I feel like doesn't get enough recognition. And this is cool, I hadn't uh, seen this before. It looks like it is a collection of, of demo recordings. But there's like a lot of songs on here that, that I love, Counting the Days, Golden Soldiers. Yeah, I'm like super curious to hear these demo versions. I didn't even know that this existed. Again, like super underrated. I feel like they're on par with a lot of the greats from that era. Somehow don't really get talked about enough. Had to give a shout out to Thomas Dolby, who I love. Radio silence. Radio silence. This is Golden Age of Wireless. And yeah, it's probably not for everybody, but like there there are some songs on here that just like never get old to me. There's there's a track Airwaves, it's like a bit of a ballad. It's just so good, like the chord changes are like really unexpected and it's just like really clever synth music. Europa and the Pirate Twins, love that track. She Blinded Me With Science, which is like a very just sort of like kitsch track. Definitely put him in, in like one hit wonder territory. She blinded me with science. She blinded me with science. You know, he was kind of a session player. He did a lot of work for other bands and then he started doing production work as well. So, you know, like worked with Prefab Sprout. It's goofy, like it's it's goofy. And I don't, I don't think that even he w would would argue with that, but it it's, it kind of like touches a lot of things that I love production wise. I love his production, you know, all the kind of things that you would expect of like a, a mid 80s synth pop record. But yeah, so those are my picks. That's it. All right. That's it, yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.